in death your father seems to have over the last 72 hours started to bring people together, uh, which is pretty remarkable in this period that we're going through, particularly in this town. Can that last? Can something good come of that? Well, a girl can dream. <laughs> Look, outside of Washington, uh, in your businesses and our communities, people actually do like each other more often than not, and they do find common ground and they solve problems. The contagion hasn't spread uh, to the extent that people in Washington thinks, think it's, you know, the world's coming to an end. It really isn't. Um, this is still a pretty dynamic country, and there are a whole lot of people focused on solving problems, and they know that with civility and kindness and compassion and generosity of spirit, you can do far more than pushing people down and making yourself look better and all the things that go on here. So I'm not, I'm much more optimistic uh, because I don't come here often. <laughs> and um, I, I follow this kind of abstractly now, not, not uh, consumed by it. But I hope, look, my dad was a really unique, special guy and my mom's passing similarly kind of brought, the, it, hopefully it's not the end of an era because that's the other thing that people talk about. That would be bad. It'd be bad to be the end of an era where, you're, where you actually care about uh, family and you support one another and you, you show integrity and compassion and courage um, instead of the, what we now reward as, you know, a sign of strength now is, is measured differently. So I hope it's not an end of era. My, my belief is that um, people I hang out with don't think it is. So you were a faithful son and a very strong family, so you, you obviously learned a lot of things from your father. But if you had to distill it down to one big thing you learned from your father and one big thing that we should learn from his life and his legacy, how would you describe that? Not one. I'll, I'll say a couple that people haven't talked about. One is the guy was like incredibly competitive. Yeah. Um, I saw him play I mean, horseshoes we, at Kenny Bunkport. Well, not, I mean, <laughs> life, life, not just horseshoes, but <laughs> winning politically, yeah. um, winning uh, in, a, in the right way, but he was very competitive. I'll, just as one, I was thinking about this, um, in 1980, he was running against Governor Reagan. And just for the record, I remember these things because I was full-time as a volunteer. You know, he won two to one in Pennsylvania. He won Michigan. He carried Oregon. He won like 15 primaries. Not that it really mattered. The thing was over. But a week before the end of the primary process, my dad was like in... Washington State campaigning, um, the whole, Jim Baker finally had to drag him off the campaign trail <laughs> saying it's over. You know, like he, he's a very competitive guy. I'd say that um, just his persona doesn't necessarily show that. Secondly, he was very entrepreneurial. Mm. Um, people kind of forget that at the early age of, gosh, 23 with little George W. Um, in a cradle somewhere. <laughs> They went to Odessa, Texas uh, to start out and he worked for Dresser Industries, but shortly thereafter, before he was 30, he was the CEO of a, of a new venture called Zapata that turned into Zapata Offshore that was uh, one of the pioneers in the offshore drilling business. He took big risks. I remember in the mid-60s, I was, uh, I don't know what age, I was probably 12 years old, I came home and I never saw my dad unhappy because if he was, and he was, I'm sure he never would show it, share it with his kids. And he was really down, and I said, what happened? He said, well, we have, we have three, we had three rigs, and one of them just got wiped out uh, in Hurricane Carla, I believe it was. Literally one-third of your assets wiped out. For those in the oil sector, you know that now you kind of batten down the hatches. Well, 1960, in the entrepreneur oil and gas exploration world, they didn't have that opportunity. So um, I would, those are the two things that I, I would say are p things that people don't realize. And, and he used those tools as a public leader as well. But look, the guy was um, just the most generous, kind person to ever meet, decent. Um, and he treated everybody the same way. So I've probably gotten, I'm still an email guy, I'm kind of uh, old school, and I've, I've gotten 1,800 emails in the last two days, and I'll respond to all of them because uh, my dad would ask me to do that. <laughs> uh, and the, the ones that I most love are the ones that people I've never met that said, I met your dad, he did something incredible that redirected my life in a way just because he, he actually cared. You know, he, he, didn't, he didn't think, well, I'm a big dog, you're not, let me move on to the important people. Uh, he treated everybody the same way, and that's the, that's the most powerful lesson that I've learned.